When did I write my first song? That's a great question. I'm not sure I know the answer to that. Um, and I definitely don't know what I called it. I mean, I probably started like composing, like I thought, you know, of it as a composition when I was in high school, maybe. But I remember I wrote a piece for string quartet that uh, four of my friends in high school that were string players played at the like spring concert or winter concert for the instrumental program at my high school. Um, but uh, I think I just called it like agitato for a string quartet or something. I got the term from a piano piece probably, and it probably wasn't even appropriate for the for the piece, but I liked the name at the time. You know, 16 year olds think a certain way. For sure, uh, Thelonious Monk was a big influence on me as a composer, uh, John Coltrane. Um, some more modern, contemporary, I guess would be the word, guys like Chris Potter, Peter Bernstein, definitely influences on me um, when I was developing my language. I, I submitted a tune called Mystery Blues, but that was a tune that I played with Three Blind Mice um, for years. Um, so that got into, the, into there. But wow. we're playing a lot of new music. Some tunes by Ben and Sean, too, so I don't know if those may be included in the book as well. I include it because it's a blues, so I figured people wouldn't have too much of a hard time interpreting it. But the best thing to do would be listen to our recording of it, um, since the head is very uh, rhythmic and, and there's a lot of kind of strange things happening. It's not just, you know, just the rhythm section you can't just play 4-4 four, four over that. Um, so listen to the recording, Three Blind Mice recording of that. That'll, that'll tell you everything you need to know about playing it. Um, so the band tonight is uh, Ben Galise on vibraphone, Sean Markey on guitar, uh, Doug Herlinger on drums, of course myself on organ. Um, and I, uh, I wrote some music a couple summers ago with vibes and guitar, um, and I really like that combination with organ, uh, you know, with the other organ groups I play with. Now, of course, organ trio is usually has guitar, organ, drums anyway, so that's not that out of the ordinary, but... Um, uh, yeah, yeah, there was just this sound I really liked, so I called these guys because they're all people that I love their playing and, you know, great musicians, great to work with, and I knew that anything I wrote that they could, you know, they'd be able to kill it, so um, it's been a lot of fun. We've been playing pretty often for about a year now, so it's like starting to get looser and, you know, there's definitely a vibe and some better communication and sort of, you know, that mind reading that happens after you've been playing together for a while. Um, of course, Doug and I have been playing together anyway out, outside of this, so we already have a really good rapport. Um, for Oregon, it's the drummer. That's the number one thing. Like, the two of you, really, that's the relationship. It has to, it has to be right or, or nothing else will be cool. Um, Philly's got to be the best musical influence that I think a jazz musician could have. Um, there's such a strong foundation of tradition here, and, you know, the swing is, is always there. Like, I was... Uh, Lamenting to some of my younger students that they weren't around for Mickey Roker because um, they're, you know, they're just too young. And so people like that and, um, and, you know, I've been playing with Bootsy for almost 18 years now. So mentorship in Philly, you know, is great and yeah, all that. And a lot of creative, a lot of, a lot of amazing players and it's not maybe as high pressure of a place as some other places and it's a little bit easier to live here just to survive keep your head above water as a musician um, so yeah I think that's something in the music that reflects that it's relaxed even when it's intense it's not just like cramming it down your throat all the time like some other places might seem at times um, thanks to Jazzbridge for having me uh, uh, it's great to be able to present my own music which is really special and um, just for being uh, being here, like it's a great, I, I know a lot of people that have benefited from the work that all the people at Jazzbridge have done. So it's, it's you know, I always say if I won the lottery, I think the first uh, nonprofit I would donate to would be Jazzbridge. So thank, thank you guys for doing what you do.